Hi folks, welcome back to another video on my custom Trotter lawnmower. I'm not very happy with it. I've had a bit of a fail on it. Let me show you what's happened. Well, if you remember from the last video, I powder coated over the Vactan rust treatment, which I've never done before. And um, what happened was, was that around where the Vactan was, I treated it, I left it on there and it basically didn't really cover and it reacted and lifted sort of thing. So I sanded it back and then I put it back in the oven and it took all right, apart from a few little spots. There was a spot here which didn't take all right and there was a spot here which didn't take all right. And I was gonna leave it like it. But me being me, no, I had to go and touch it again, didn't I? So I covered the whole lot again and it started to, the powder, I've never had this before, the powder started to sort of create like layers on it and I've never seen that before. I don't know why that was, because you can powder coat over powder coat, which I have done successfully on many occasions. But um, not coming across that before, I just put it in the oven and see how it see what was going to happen with it. And basically the lines stay there. Normally it all floats out and everything's all right. But I didn't know what that was, so I had to take it out of the oven again. Then I had to sand it flat again where that, that happened and put it back in. And as I started spraying the, the, the powder on it, just on the deck like this, rather than hang it up, it started to do that layering thing again. So anyway, I put it in, but I decided to leave it in for a lot longer this time. And this is the result of it. I'm not really too happy. I'm not happy with it at all, to be honest with you. Not compared to the stuff I've done before. Let's just show you. But I'm going to have to go with it because I don't know why it happened. I'll have to try and find out off of uh, Electrostatic Magic, the people who supply my powders, whether or not they've seen this before and know the reasons why. I'm not expert enough to know that. So if any of you have used this system in the past and know how and why it lay layers like the way it has done, don't forget, I wasn't powder coated. I, I, I could have probably sanded everything off or got the paint stripper out, taken everything off and then started from fresh again and it would have been fine. But I have laid pow powder over powder before with no problems, but in this case, it just didn't do it. Let's just show you what I'm gonna have to deal with now. So yeah, I mean, I could do that magic photography thing and hold it at an angle like that and not let anyone know and pretend everything's all right. But when you get actually closer up to it, can you see the sort of textured finish there, look? Mm. And normally that floats out and it's just not happened in this case and this down the first time or the second time i powder coated it as you can see from the video i'll put a little clip in there you can see it was absolutely perfect that was powder coating over powder coating this is the fourth time i've done it and i can't seem to get that surface again so short for me taking it all off and uh, starting again which i'm not going to do i've wasted so much time on this so to be honest with you and after all it is a trotter mower they're not renowned for being the most perfect <laughs> paint jobs on them vehicles so what I'm going to do is just go with it it's just the top surface finish isn't what I want or wanted and what I've had before on many a successful occasion so uh, yeah as I say rather than just uh, mess about with it anymore I'm going to leave it as it is but uh, yeah just to let you know sometimes things don't always go to plan folks and uh, I don't know I don't know why that happened maybe well the oven was up to sort of 200 degrees C and I left it in there for a long period of time about 40 minutes actually although they say 10 minutes, but you have to get the part up to temperature. The part was up to temperature, but it's just not sort of floating out for some reason. Anyway, I'm gonna leave that there. So coming over here, I've just in the process, I've just started sandblasting this, as you can see. That's the top recoil cover. That was the rusty condition that was in, and I'm getting it down to that. And I'll show you, I'll, pow I'll powder coat this in a minute, and uh, we'll see what this looks like after powder coating it from onto bare metal, which I'm gonna be doing there, as I normally do. The engine has had a coat of heat proof paint now all around there so i'm happy with that that's going to look nice and tidy and coming over here let me just uncover this these parts of as you know have been refurbished that's been heat proof painted i haven't painted the underside no need to really do that so that's had heat proof paint and put in the oven so is the exhaust the uh, ignition coil there as you can see is now protected so that'll look all right. And also them other brackets there, which again, powder coated, look fantastic on them, as you can see, look. That's the titanium silver, which I've used on many of occasions, look. Very nice indeed. So I've very rarely had a powder coat fail. Don't forget, I'm only a do-it-yourself at the end of the day. And I don't know why that happened, so I'll probably have to find out from other people who may have had the same problem. And it's nothing to do with Faraday cage effects and all that, because this system, which I use, doesn't have any electric to it at all. It's just like, um, works off of your body static, hence the electrostatic magic name for the uh, company who actually supplied that. I never had any problems at all with it. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna carry on sandblasting that. We'll powder coat that cover and see how that turns out.
All right, I've got that down to where I want it, folks. This top bit here, I actually sanded that off with a DA sander. This must be powder coated, this, because uh, this really doesn't want to come off in a sandblaster. And uh, I've done it before. I've literally powered the coated over the top of all this, and it normally comes out all right. But there was some rust bubblage on there. That's why I hit that with a DA sander with 80 grit. So that's that now. I'm just going to wipe it down with some uh, acetone, clean it all off. Now, I don't think it's as crucial with um, tin as aluminium, for example, that uh, you could preheat this, put it in the oven and preheat it. Or what I normally do is take the blow lamp to it just to bring out all the surface impurities before I uh, actually do powder coat it. But I'm not going to do it in this case, as I say, because uh, it's not aluminium. All right, OK. So... That's that. Oh, look at them bloody gloves. Look, cheap crap gloves. Look. <sighs> Unbelievable. Right, so let's hang this up and give it some powder coat, black gloss. Right, so as I've said in many of my other videos, I've got a playlist of her powder coating videos. This is the system I use. It's the Easy Coat system from Electrostatic Magic. And all it consists of with is the gun, a water trap, and this little system here, there's no box to plug into the wall electrically. All the magic is done apparently in this little chamber here, where it takes negative charged particles and changes into positive charged particles. So when they come out there, they're positively charged. Anything you powder coat wants to be connected to you or a grounding system to give it the attraction. So all you do is you take your powder, I've got the black gloss one here. I hope there's enough in here. And literally just screw the bottle on to your Thing, make sure it's tight you want this about half to three quarters full apparently for it to work correctly and basically that's it set your compressor to sort of five to eight psi let's go and do the old powder coating now because of the issues i've been having what i normally do is I say this metal bracket here normally connects via this copper rod which i hold and the part gets if i can just show you let's take that off there in fact i'm going to change that location of that because that's a better earth. I'm touching the metal part there from the uh, hook. And that metal hook obviously is uh, touching that copper part, that copper pole, and that copper pole is touching me. So them parts, when, it, when, the, set, when the powder hits that, should be negatively charged. The positive is attracted to the negative and it should stick. That's the theory behind it anyway. I'm just gonna hold that and then just start to gently powder coat that. And as you can see, the powder is automatically attracted to the surface. I can even take that off of that copper rod there, like that, and spin it round. And as long as I'm holding the part, which I am there, it will stick. Look. And that should be enough, look. I ain't done the underneath, there's no need to do the underneath. So looking all around that, everything's well covered. And there's no lines and it's nice and smooth, the application. So this can go in the oven now. So rather than me use my big powder coating oven, the one that I made, I'm gonna use my little, little one here. And uh, I'm just gonna put that in there by just taking that tray, putting that forward, look. There we go, so I've just transferred that onto me try let's put that in there shut the door up and count down 15 minutes but with this one we can look through the glass and actually get an indication as to the uh how that how it's going so i'll leave that for 10 to 15 minutes and then we'll come back to it right it's been about 12 to 15 minutes now folks so i'm just going to turn the little oven off and let's have a little look and see what this has turned out like. Now, so far, it looks really nice and glossy. Let me get a glove, hold on. Get a couple of gloves here. It looks like the problem probably could have been that that earthing pole I have, which I rely from my grounding, may not have been clean. So that's probably the reason I would have thought. And uh, you live and learn, don't you? So let's just pull this out. All right, there we go, folks. You can see that, how glossy that is. Let's just put it down there for the moment. Let's 
shut that door so there we go folks that's how it should come out I'm well happy with that look and there's that top bit there as you can remember where we have the a little bit of paint left on there but uh, it's not done anything it's not affected it in any way so once that cools off which will probably be in about 10 to 15 minutes that will be hard and durable as anything so I kept the original label so I'll end up putting them back on there's a round one in the center there and also the uh, front one that goes on there I've just stuck them up there for the moment as you can see so uh, they should go back on all right so there you go things don't always go to plan you've got to find out why these problems happen I think it's the dirty bar the earth bar as I said or the grounding bar so and when I laid when I done the second coat on top of the the motorcycle hoist there I don't think I had any I did sound a little bit off in the back where I could hold on and touch it but um, there was obviously not enough grounding to create that proper effect and that's why it was probably clumping I suppose I don't know I'll have to have a word with electrostatic magic and see if they can uh, sort of throw any light on it but that's what it seems like to me because that has come out absolutely perfect right okay folks let's uh, move forward now we're going to start getting assembly ready now I'm just going to clean up a few more of the parts that you haven't seen yet like the wheel covers and stuff like that I don't know whether to paint them black because they're red at the moment that might look a bit awkward on the yellow and yellow mower I'm not too sure but uh, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it so I'll see you in a minute Right, a bit further down the line now, folks. I've taken all the wheel brackets. I've given them a light sandblast, and I've not gone too mad with them. They was very rusty, but um, I'm going to powder coat these as well. I'm going to do them in the uh, titanium silver as well. Let's get on with it. Let's get my mask on and get this titanium silver on here. All right, put the fan on as well, folks. And let's get going. I'm using the big oven for this folks because I think there's a bigger rail in there. Right, let's shut that door pretty quick. That'll soon come back up to temperature. Right. So they'll stay in there for probably 10 to 15 minutes I would imagine at 180 degrees C and this is my homemade pulled powder coating oven those of you who don't know and realize that I actually made this one myself there is a playlist on that I'll leave that at the end of this video so you can see that but uh, right we've got about 10 to 15 minutes to wait here now and then we'll see what these are like when they come out see you in a minute right 15 minutes later folks let's turn the oven off and let's get the door open Okay, they look lovely. Titanium silver. Lovely finish. Just as it should be, look, all the way around. So I can probably just leave them hanging up in there now, folks, and um, let them dry off. I'll keep the doors open on it. And what I thought I'd try, these are the uh, wheel caps, what I told you about. You can probably see that they've faded quite a bit there. That's the red other side. And I have heard that <clears throat> with plastics, I know you can do it on car bumpers, that if you heat this up with a sort of a hot air gun, 
apparently the colour comes back. So I, I'm just going to try it. I'm not going to go too mad with it. If we bugger it up, it's not a problem because they're only blinking wheel caps and they're only plastic and these are 10 a penny on eBay. So uh, let's give it a go anyway. So I've got my heat gun here. And let's do it on our metal table. So I've never tried this before, folks. So this is an experiment. So let's give it a bit of heat and see what happens. All right, that don't appear to be doing anything, folks. So um, I think we'll call that a fail. I'm just a bit dubious about doing it too much because I don't want it to melt, you see. So they've still got their shape at the moment. But um, as you can see from the other side, they didn't sort of come back to the colour. I've seen people do it on bumpers and um, it does work. So maybe I didn't leave it on there for long enough, but that's quite hot at the moment. So I'll run the risk of it melting. So I'll leave it like that. I could paint them if I wanted to. I'll see how we go. They might go black. I might put them red again. I'm not sure. But um, I'm not too sure if it goes with that, does it? Black. Black, I think, yeah. Black. Hello, baby. Black, it's got a bit. It's trotter. So you don't have no red, it's black. Yeah. Or oh. leopard print. <laughs> I can't paint that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what we could do. Oh, what? Oh, what? We could scalp him. He's not a leopard print. Take your spots off, Dougal, and we put that on the, on the side of it. Oh, oh here we go. Look, here we go. Look. He goes for shadows, folks. Look. <laughs> he bounces for shadows. Look. Go on, off you go. Now, yeah, look. Mind your nut. This is a shadow. He does that on the carpet indoors, folks. I don't know where this has come from. Go on in, baby. Out you go. I'll be in in a minute. Right, so I'm going to go in. Folks, Sharon wants to go down the road. And uh, we'll carry on with this little escapade a little bit later on. I'll see you in a minute. Right, I'm inside now, folks. I've just been over to my craft cutter and I've cut out my Trotter's logos now. So I've just got to prepare these to, for putting on the mower and I, that means cutting them off the roll of the vinyl roll, which I've just cut them out on. Putting on some application tape on the top of them so that I can actually lay them onto my uh, decals. So let me get these all weeded out and cut into their segments and uh, then we're going to put them on. Okay, folks, that's all me graphics cut out now. There you go. And to like the place these on, I hope I've cut them to the right size. I think I have done. Yeah, they seem to look all right there. Right, let's get these applied now, and then we'll see how it looks afterwards. Right, so first of all, we take the backing paper off. Just leave the application tape. And hopefully all the letters stay on the uh, application tape. See, this is old vinyl, this is. Yeah, can you see what's happening there, folks? Look, look, it's coming off on the letters, so I'm going to have to take my time and peel this off, and then we'll lay it on. So I will have to pick all these little white bits off individually, unfortunately. So I'll come back to you when I've taken this off, because it's a bit awkward. Right, got it all off, folks. So let's just lay this on in the correct position. All right, I'm going to go with there. Get me squeegee. Just rub it over the letters before we peel that backing paper off. And hopefully all the letters stay put. Right, here we go. And there we go, folks. One front identified trotter's lawnmower. Trotter's Independent Trading. 
Well, I'm going to put the rest on now, folks, and we'll have a look at it in a second. There we go, folks. I'm really happy with that. I think it looks lovely, just like the other one I made. There you go, all the way around. You mow it makes sense. Look at that, look. I like it a lot. In fact, I think we're going to keep this one. So, because uh, the paint works not as good as the other one I've done. When I say not as good, it's, it's more of a textured finish there, as you well know. And uh, I'm not happy to sell that to anyone, but um, I'm going to keep it because I like it. And... Trotter vans weren't the highly painted things out there, were they? They was a bit rough around the edges. So, yeah, it all goes in with the inkeeping of it sort of thing. As you can see, like a textured finish there, look. I don't know whether to lacquer it over, though. I'm not sure. There you go. Now let's put it all back together and see what the end result looks like. I'll see you in a minute. OK, folks, it's the next day now. It has been bugging me. <laughs> The finish is okay, but one thing I want to protect is the, the decals because I think if someone spilt petrol on them, they would just float off because they're just normal decals. So I'm going to lacquer it. I'm going to put it under a coat of lacquer just to protect the decals. I've never lacquered over a powder coat before. Uh, so we're going to see how it goes. Again, another experiment. If you don't try these things, you don't know. You can get lacquer powder coating, which you can powder coat a clear lacquer over it. Uh, put it in the oven, but I can't put it in the oven and do that because obviously the decals are uh, made of vinyl and I'm not too sure if they'll bubble up or whatever. So we're going to go with a standard uh, 2K lacquer, not a normal rattle can lacquer uh, because that's petrol resistant, uh, the 2K that I use. So let's get it lacquered. Let's leave it until it goes hard and then we'll have another look at it and see if that improves the finish on the surface as well as covering up the decals and protecting them. Again, very dangerous stuff 2K. So Make sure you've got a decent mask on. And away we go. Right, okay, folks, we'll give that about 10 minutes before we give it another coat. That was only sort of a tack coat sort of thing, so um, uh, we'll give it a second coat afterwards and see how it looks then. Right, folks, 15 minutes later, it's looking okay. I'll know a lot better when I give it the full coat now, so this isn't the ideal spraying environment in here, as you well know. It's a dusty blinking shack at the end of the day, but uh, it's going to protect these decals, hopefully, so let's get on with it, give it its second coat, and then we'll let it flash off.
<coughs> right. <coughs> oh, there we go, folks. All right, I'm going to leave that overnight now, I think. I'm going to put the heat lamp on it for about 30 minutes, I suppose, and uh, just give it a good chance to cure off. And there is a few bits floating about in it, but um, at the end of the day, it is a lawnmower. It, I am in a dusty shed. I've not prepared anything with regards to making it dust free or whatever. So uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll come back to it tomorrow and then we'll reassemble everything and get it back together. But initially, I think it's a success. It will flatten off this. It won't stay ultra, ultra glossy like it's wet. But it will sink back a little bit. But um, all in all, I think it was the right thing to do. And uh, yeah, so we're, we're lacquering over powder coat. And that flat finish and that textured finish it's basically all but gone, so happy days. Right, so time to reassemble the engine. Lucky enough, I did have a spare brand new head gasket, so um, I'm applying that. But first of all, I did soak all the engine bolts in uh, MC51. You can do it in vinegar, it doesn't really matter. It's just to get rid of all the surface rust. So I'm just fitting the uh, new, well, the repainted ignition coil. And also some of these little brackets that um, are powder coated just to finish the uh, the engine off. On with the flywheel, making sure the wood rough key is in place. Also fitting the uh, exhaust now. I'm hoping that when I start this up, it shouldn't smoke. It may do, and if it does, then it's just a matter of burning it off. So um, that's just something we're going to have to come up against. And now I'm going to re-gap the uh, air gap between the coil and the uh, flywheel. I'll just do that with a piece of thin card. I'm putting on the back brake assembly there. Again, these are all simple little jobs. And all these parts are easily serviceable. So we're just going to put some new um, cord on the, the starter. This is 3.5mm cord. And just reassembling the uh, cylinder head now with the new gasket. I'll tighten these up loosely first of all. Just go across in a sort of a star pattern. So you uh, basically do them up evenly. And I'll come back to that in a minute and torque them down. So just to fit the refurbished carb, I did put a new diaphragm and gasket in this carb, give it a good clean out and uh, check everything else out and uh, painted the top of the fuel tank as well with an enamel paint because uh, normal sort of spray rattle can paint will just fall off straight away whereas the hammerite type paint is more resistant to fuel I find. And there's only two bolts that hold the fuel tank on and the carb assembly. And on with our freshly painted cover, or powder coated cover should I say, with its new pull cord. Again, three 10mm bolts hold that on. I did clean up the uh, wire guard as well, just with some uh, scotch Bright pad, just to take the sooty marks off of it. It is uh, stainless, not stainless, I think it's plated actually. And then to torque these down. Now I, I, I think I found uh, 150 inch pounds was suitable for this engine. You can do the conversions on Google if you want foot pounds or newton meters. And the air filter, as you can see, had been covered in oil. I didn't bother with that. Lucky enough, I do keep a stock of this sort of stuff. And a brand new air filter was uh, put in. New B2LM spark plug as well. And the first time the engine is back on the deck now. Only held on by three bolts, this nuts and bolts. So I'm just doing these up as we speak. And it is looking mighty fine, this lawnmower, I must say. Very pleased with the outcome. A little wipe down before we have a closer look at it. And I think you'll agree, folks, it does look pretty special. I know for a fact there's only two of these about that I know of. And I've got both of them. There we go. You can see how the paint, the lacquer just flats off a little bit. And there's the freshly powder coated top there. Looking absolutely fantastic. 
Trotter's lawnmower engines. As you remember from the series, Rodney and Mickey Pierce went into business and bought Dell's old lawnmower engines that he sold at auction. Right, folks, here we go, all finished. Just got to fill it up with oil and we're ready to go. I've got the uh, wheel caps to put on still. Some may like them red, they may not, who knows. But uh, we'll just whack them on. No, they don't look too bad, do they? They're all clean, so uh, I didn't really want to paint them because they could scrape against walls. Not that this mower's probably going to do much work, but uh, yeah, there we go. Just come around that side and put these other two on. There we go, superb. Even if I do say so myself. Happy days, there we go. Brand new cord on it. Fully serviced, fully ready to go. Just wants a bit of a wipe over, it's got my fingerprints all over it still, but uh, I'm sure you'll agree. It's looking mighty fine, folks. Grass box is back on now. Control cable for the handbrake is still on, uh, back on, and all working, functioning perfectly. So to all intents and purposes, this mower now is probably better protected now than what it was when it came out of the factory back in 2005. And this takes probably about 500 millilitres of SAE 30 oil. To be honest with you, you can put any type of oil in here. I've seen videos where people run these things. I'm blinking vegetable oil, stuff you put in your chip fryer, that sort of stuff, and they go on and on. But um, car oil's obviously got more protection in it. But see, the thing is, there's no oil ways in here. All you've got is a splash guard system from the sump that literally just lubricates everything. So, uh, Realistically, there's no small, tiny oil waste to feed. There's no oil pump, no oil filter. So yeah, there we go. So I've got about 500 milliliters here. I won't put it all in. I'll put it probably about 400 and then we'll see where we are on the dipstick. In she goes. Right, that's probably down to about just under the 100 left there now. All right, okay, be careful not to spill anything. And with this type of um, lawnmower, you wind the dipstick fully in as opposed to like a Honda type where you just sit it there so let's have a look and see where this is on the dipstick now yeah put that last little drop in I think there we go and one thing you don't want to do with these sort of lawnmowers folks is overfill them I've seen it where it comes halfway out the dipstick and that causes all sorts of problems with regards to smoking engines and all right, let's put that there. Let's do one more dip. Perfect. Right on the top line. Totally happy with that. You can't see that, but I can. So 500 millilitres, folks. Or half a litre. <laughs> right, let's just nip that up gently. Like that. Little twist. Let's take it outside and let's see if it fires up. Let's see if it don't pull the blinking pool cord out of my arm. <laughs> All right, there we go. Let's see if it starts, shall we? I'll put the plug cap back on. I normally forget to do that. There we go. Get some fuel in it. I might put too much in at the start because uh, it'll probably be standing about for a bit. Oh, there's a fair old drop in there. About half a tank, I suppose. All right, let's put that back in there. Didn't even spill a drop, folks. How about that? Okay, folks, this is it. Let's give it a prime. I can feel fuel going into the primer. All right, here we go. Totally cold start, folks. Happy days. Look at that. Well, there you go, folks. So there you go, folks. I'm really happy with this build. 
We've had a little trials and tribulations along the way with it, with uh, the powder coating not taken initially, but that was down to my own user error, so I hold my hands up for that one. We got over it by lacquering it, and we've also put the decals on underneath the lacquer, which is going to protect them as well. Not too sure exactly what I'm doing with this motor at the moment, but um, it's a fantastic looking piece of kit. Anyway, thanks very much, folks. Don't forget, if you want to see some more of this sort of stuff where I repair the lawnmowers like this, as well as other car stuff and motorcycle related stuff, at the end of this video, you'll see the two cards there where you can just click on and it will show you more interesting videos that I've done in the past. Thanks very much, folks. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now.